like probably today, huh? Don't you think? Yeah, I think so. What kind but, of what kind of wax does somebody run today? Uh probably run a, a red wax. A red wax. Yeah. Cool. You know, red so, Twix, red Toco, something like that. Yeah, you know, mix it up a little yeah. bit. So did you guys just kill it during the holidays? Yeah, very busy. It was great. Good. Great holidays. Good, Good holidays. A lot of people in town. Um, you know, everything ran pretty smooth. Renting skis, tuning people's stuff up. Exactly. Telling people where to go. Do, do, do people, when they come in, I mean, because you deal so much with visitors coming to Lake Tahoe, coming in there, renting skis, getting their stuff dialed in, selling boots. Do, do people know where to go when they're in town, like to go skiing? Or or are some people like, where, I don't know what lift to go to. I don't. They don't have a clue. I mean, it's amazing sometimes, you know, you know, you sit there and they actually will be sitting at my shop on Pioneer Trail on Highway 50 yep. and ask me where Heavenly is. Yep. Or, you know, and don't, how do we get there? And that's the challenge of this job. <laughs> it's so often, like during the holiday period, I kept saying, like when these reporters call in from the resort is, you've got to help people. We all live here. We know it seems so obvious that Heavenly's above us. And right. You, you know all these other resorts around here. We're all familiar with them, but... When you're visiting, man, you need help from the local people. They don't have a clue. You know, yeah. they've showed up and they just, you know, you know, they, they need to be <laughs> led by the hand. I mean, literally, you know. Where is Heavenly? Where is that? Heavenly? Yep. How do we get to the lifts? Yep. You know, I have that question five times a day. No kidding. Yeah. yeah I, figured, I figured you'd have a, so. good, a good pulse <laughs> on that one. So uh, you always bring in something visual. This is, is relatively new as a preventative type of, of uh, apparatus. Exactly. If you, if you will. <laughs> you know, knee braces have been around for years, and, mm -hmm. and it's usually for recovery. You know, right. after, after knee surgery, you don't have the full strength, so they're um, or using them to give you a little more strength so you can get, get back out on the slopes and start doing your athletic sports a little faster and uh, more efficiently, okay, and, and build up the strength. So Asterix, which is actually comes out of uh, motocross and a whole bunch of other stuff, have designed this actual brace as a preventative brace. I've been hearing a bunch about and seeing them, seeing them advertised. Right. Full carbon fiber frame, fairly lightweight for what yeah. it is, um, fully adjustable. There's five, four sizes, five sizes, small, medium, large, extra large. Um, we size them up to you. They're adjustable. Um, and I say it's preventative. It's an airbag for your knees or seat belts for your knees. Now I know, um, I know if you go through the Tahoe Fracture Clinic, I ended up getting a, a CTI brace after an ACL surgery. It was around 750 bucks or so for one, mm -hmm. and uh, and it didn't really look anything like this. It didn't have the knee the kneecap protector, the patella protector there. Uh, well, what what do people end up spending on this? And and who gets this? Who gets this product? Um, 600 bucks <clears throat> for the set. Uh huh. For two. Okay. For two. Uh huh. That's a pair. And you know what? I've been selling them to a lot, lot of big mountain skiers. Yep. Um, the racers, whatever, because. You know, knee surgery now is forty thousand dollars. If yeah. you know, without yeah, no, without insurance, with insurance, you know, you're still going to spend anywhere from five to eight thousand dollars with your deductible and all that. So it's pretty cool that you you know, it's not going to. I'm not going to say it's going to prevent every single type of knee injury. Sure, but it's definitely you know, like a seatbelt or an airbag. It's going to help prevent those yeah. things, and it's an extra piece of caution. You know. Wow. And. You start wearing them, you put them on, it's kind of like your bicycle helmet. You start kind of almost feel naked without it when yeah, you go no, out there. Yeah, I bet. And you, know? and you told me you've been wearing these. Your knees, you said, are perfectly fine. Never hurt my knees. I, I had a slight MCL tear when I broke my, my leg a few years ago. Uh -huh. um, but other than that, I've never had a knee problem in my life. And it's just preventative. That's, and, you know. and how are you rocking those things? You said, like, before you leave the house, you just put them on underneath your ski pants and then just go to the resort. Go to, go to the resort. You know, maybe when I get done, I'll pull the pant up and unclip it and pull it off, you know, after that. But, you know, really easy. Um, first time putting them on probably takes twice as long as what normally, like you know. Anything. Like, like anything. Like putting your else. ski boots on for the first time right. this season even, yeah. But um, there's some little adjustments mm -hmm. to make it more comfortable. We can adjust this width and the, and the lower leg mm -hmm. width, so it adjusts really nice around the leg. Cool. Um, cinch up, and it's pretty simple to cool. use. Well, I look forward to talking to you in a couple of weeks. Bring something else new in. Oh, yeah, always. Brent Springbeck from the Powder House. You need your boots fitted. That's the guy you go to. Dave is the guy you go to when you want to find out what's happening in heaven.